Hey guys, it's Kat, and today I'm going to be telling you my 36 week baby update and also explaining why I was in the hospital last week. This is a little bit different than the past couple videos. Same room and everything, I just wanted to sit in a different place because I'm uncomfortable. So, yeah. Um, ignore the fact that this half the lights don't work and this half does. I need to put up new lights. I didn't realize they were like that until we hung them up and plug them in. So I'm gonna start off by saying, no, I did not have the baby. Um, I don't know why everyone thought that. My mom had made a post on Facebook after we were like leaving and I was getting discharged and everything. Something to the effect of that she like lost me at the hospital, couldn't be found, which I'll explain in a second. It was supposed to be a funny post and then people then thought I was like having the baby then and I was like no no I explained like what actually happened why I was at the hospital. The post ended up getting taken down after a couple hours because it started drama. Which exactly proves my point as to why we are keeping things fairly private when I do go into labor. I made it very clear within the post and in the comments and everything that I was not in labor and I, I don't know. I don't know why it got so confusing and so many people thought that I had the baby. I was like, if we were gonna post pictures of me and label, wouldn't you think we'd post pictures of the baby that's born? I apologize if I'm super like breathy and um, not able to complete my sentences without dying, but I can't breathe, which we'll get into why. I mean, honestly, if you've been pregnant, you know why I can't breathe. You get the gist of it that happens with pregnancy. So now that I kind of went on my little rant about the whole hospital situation and why it was so confusing and addressing all of that, here's what actually happened. I hadn't been feeling good all day. I kind of was just like feeling a little off and my chest had been hurting really bad and I didn't understand why. In general, I kind of had had some anxiety that day, but it wasn't like anything out of the normal. But it was just worse. Like my chest was just hurting. Well, I started to get some, like, pain in my stomach and back. Up until that point, I hadn't really had much back pain. And I would, like, get it if I was moving too much or, like, you know, I would know what was causing it. But this kind of just happened for no reason. So I started to go to sleep and take a nap because I was like, you know what? I ate some food. I was tuckered out. <laughs> Not from eating food, but I was tuckered out because I, had, like, run a bunch of errands because... If I go into town, like, I'm gonna get all my errands done at once instead of, like, spacing them out like I should. She's moving around if you wonder why I'm holding my belly. So I took a nap, and then I woke up, and it was worse. And so I tried moving around, I tried different things, and I, and I was just kind of concerned because my chest pain got to the point where, like, I couldn't nap anymore. It was, like, I was exhausted and couldn't sleep, and I was like, what is this chest pain? And so I started to get a little... I don't want to say paranoid about it, but I was like, okay, well, I'm going to call the doctor and just see. Um, and at this point, it was still, like, office hours, but my doctor wasn't in. She wasn't going to be in until Thursday. And so, they, I thought they were going to have me, like, at worst, go into the office and, like, just do some testing or something. And then they sent me out to labor and delivery. I guess because the pain made it seem like maybe I was going into labor, but I even said it wasn't contractions. I was like really don't think it is. I don't think I'm going to labor. I was more concerned. I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. And there wasn't anything to be concerned about. But to be fair, you know, they don't really know because you're talking over the phone. What one person could say is excruciating pain could be nothing to another. So they can't really tell you over the phone very well. I was just hoping they were going to have me go into the office and just check instead of having to go through the process of the hospital for multiple reasons. For an example, with me being a minor at the hospital, every single time I have to have a parent or guardian sign for me. And at the doctor's office, I don't have that. Like, they had to sign for me the first time, but after that, they didn't have to sign for me. They just had to give permission to, like, I don't really know why they can't do that at the hospital. I think it's because there's stricter policies with the hospital. Either way, it's a pain in the butt. The first time ever they told me to pack a bag. When there's other times where I was a little nervous I was going into labor, they didn't say pack a bag, but this time they actually said to like pack a bag. I didn't because I didn't think I was going into labor and um, I hadn't had my hospital bag finished yet. And honestly, it's not finished. 
<laughs> the stuff is just in the same general area. I at least know where it is, but it's not ruddy. And that's partially because, like, I don't know, I don't think I'm having the baby anytime soon. And if I do, I'll just throw it all together. I'm not that worried about it. I won't need it right away anyways. So I call my mom and tell her. But I was kind of, like, rushing at this point because I couldn't really breathe. <laughs> and the chest pain was just really frustrating and I'm not very good at driving I don't like driving I'm not a bad driver but I don't it was gonna make the chest pain worse because of anxiety for me driving is emotionally draining so it, it just stresses me out and I don't like doing it on top of it I get distracted quite easily and it's just really hard for me to focus when you're in pain it's hard to focus and I was really tired so all those combined I was like I really don't want to be driving but whatever it's like two streets from my house. They're two long roads though, if that makes sense. So it's not like it's just like a click around the corner thing. But I also tell my grandparents because they were closing on the house like in a half an hour. So it wasn't like they could like come out and I was like, oh nuggets. My mom was in a different town, my grandparents were not. So I had to get a hold of them so they could come out and like sign the consent form before they went into this meeting. Because if not, they can't treat me. And if I was going into labor, that's a serious issue. Well, in general, it was a serious issue because if you're going out to the hospital, typically it's really important and they need to be able to treat you or else why would you be going out there? So I got a hold of them and I didn't even tell the father of the baby I was at the hospital because he was at work until like I'd already been there for a good minute. And even then I told him I was at the hospital, but I didn't tell him why or anything like that. I didn't get to tell him. If you haven't already gathered, this was the most stressful, the like worst time yet. The water breaking situation, which I'll link that in the eye, was probably the scariest as far as baby concerns, as far as everything else concerned and me concerned. This one was the scariest because this time I was alone. So I'm sorry that I'm not looking directly at you. I'm trying not to get blinded by these lights. Plus when I talk, I kind of like make eye contact, look away, make eye contact, look away. Helps me focus, but these are just really bright lights anyways. But they put me on the monitor, you know, I'm having contractions like normal, but they're not, I don't feel them. They're like the normal contractions, practice contractions, I don't really know. I guess they're called Braxton Hicks, but there's like worse ones and sometimes I notice Braxton Hicks, sometimes I don't, but apparently I have them quite often. I don't really know. Baby's heart rate was good. Mine was not, mine was through the roof and it wasn't just an anxiety thing I mean it was like through the roof and the beeping was so annoying it was like I was like what is that sound why is it doing that and they're like oh it's because your your heart it's a little high it was, it was a lot of high <laughs> luckily the babies wasn't being affected which was good so at this point I don't really know what's going on because they're doing these different tests and like the procedures and the way they were going about stuff was different than they had before I'm sorry if you can hear my dog barking I don't even know if she's barking right now but they were just going about it differently and I was like really confused. Usually the room that they had me in, I wouldn't have to change no nightgown at all. I would just be in my normal clothes. And then when I was in a different room, they had me just take off everything put the nightgown on. Well, this time they had me take off everything besides my bra, which I've never had before. Like, I didn't know why they were letting me keep my bra on. I was just kind of like, but okay, not complaining because, you know. And they wanted to do like a cervical check. I was like, okay. I asked if it was supposed to be painful, and they were like, um, I mean, they can be uncomfortable, and I'm like, painful and uncomfortable are two different things. I didn't say that, but I was thinking it. But I was like, yeah, but it is supposed to be painful. She was like, well, it can be, and so I kind of gave her, like, kind of the fair warning that, like, I don't do well with them. So, the girl goes to do it, and she, like, can't. So she gets someone else that I'm assuming is more experienced or something. I don't know. This girl didn't seem to entirely be with it. I don't know if she was like newer or just like on having an off day or what. I had never seen her before. I had seen the other people before, kind of. So they had another girl coming to do it. And like, I figured out why they're so painful for me. It's just where my cervix is and because I'm so small, the baby's taking up more room. The reason it didn't hurt when I was like 20 some weeks is because the baby wasn't taking up as much room. Now they have to like reach around the baby because of where it's at. So that's why it hurts. I basically got to dig in there for it. And because I haven't made any progress towards labor or anything, 
I don't really know if that's the way you word it, but I'm not like dilated. Nothing's happening to the cervix, I guess, is the best way to word it. And um, so that's partially why it's so painful because like, it's just not doing anything. So at that point we knew I wasn't going into labor. Tractions were fine, like stuff was fine. Baby was fine. I wasn't having like regular contractions or like too strong of them. They weren't regular. There's like a few strong ones, but they weren't like regular. You tell it wasn't labor contractions. So at that point we're like, okay, so what's going on with me? But I didn't really know that that's what they were trying to figure out. So they ended up having someone from the ER come up to do, I think like an EKG. They could not get it. And then I was like having issues because I kept getting really dizzy. And so it was like, how they wanted me to lay down, I couldn't because I was getting dizzy and it took forever to get the test work. So I'm hooked up to all these different machines and wires. In the process, the father of baby's trying to get a hold of me and he can't. So that was stressful. Then they kind of determined that I'm gonna have to go down to the ER because it's no longer a labor and delivery thing, it's a ER thing. So I needed to try to contact my family to say, hey, I'm gonna be getting moved to the ER. Baby is fine, I'm not. Well, then the girl starts to draw blood or whatever. And um, she was kind of like struggling with my veins and I was like, oh great. Cause I don't know if my first ever story time has to do with me about passing out at the doctor's office because of I don't know, I never had issues with getting blood drawn before, and now that I'm pregnant, I have so much more blood to offer. <laughs> I think. I think that's how it works. And then I have more blood in my body, I don't know if I necessarily have to offer. But either way, I never had issues with getting blood drawn before I got pregnant. But apparently with pregnancy, there's been an issue with it. It finally gets to the, like, needle one or whatever, start drawing blood. And then the other girl comes in and is like, well, we need to start an IV, why did you go ahead and do that already? She was like, oh, well, I know we needed to get this blood drawn. And I don't even know what blood work they actually ended up doing. Like, to this day, I asked my doctor. And he said something about, like, preeclampsia or however you say it. And I've been asked that, like, multiple times. And I'm like, no, I don't have it. Apparently, a lot of the symptoms that I have could potentially be that. But my doctors reassured me that I definitely don't have it. Anyways, this girl was struggling to fill up the vials of blood. And I'm pretty sure she, like, poked through my vein or something. Because, I, I don't know why she struggled to get blood so much but then the girl does was gonna do the IV and I'm like you're gonna have to wait because I cannot be poked multiple times like in a short period of time because there's a good chance I'll pass out and um can't use the smelling salts because I messes with my asthma and I couldn't breathe as it was so I was like can we just can we just wait I didn't say she had to wait but like I was like oh wait a minute she was like yeah yeah asked if I can have water and they couldn't really give me water. I got like three sips of water. I don't know, I've never had that happen either where they wouldn't let me have water. Like usually they're like, yeah, drink a bunch of water. Obviously I'm still quite confused on this whole process. Just imagine how I felt during this. Being all alone, they weren't really communicating with me well, but apparently they weren't really communicating with anybody very well. I don't think anybody entirely knew what was going on. There was like so many different people in this tiny room like poking at me and touching me and I'm like, ah. I'm not claustrophobic, but it was just like too much. It's like I've gained this being claustrophobic thing. Finally, she goes to do the IV and ends up putting the bigger IV in. Like when I went down to the ER, they were like, why did they put such a big IV in? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe it's because they were struggling to get blood out and then I ended up drawing every single color vial of blood. I guess like trying to prep in case the ER needed the stuff just to get it done and over with. Um, they ended up not needing the IV. Uh, <laughs> I didn't use like any of the blood. So I'm really not sure. It was kind of a waste. And then, you know, I knew when they got poked a second time and she started taking more blood that I was going to get lightheaded. And of course I did because I needed to hurry up and get it done. And I was like, uh, I'm getting really dizzy. Like my vision's starting to get blurry. It got like really bad and they ended up like rolling me on my side and I ended up having like an oxygen mask. And I really don't know. I needed water. <laughs> I was real thirsty, but I couldn't have water. So then they were gonna give me fluids and they couldn't. So then I went down to the ER and at this point, I'm lost in the hospital. My mom shows up. They have taken me out of the labor and delivery room, but 
I wasn't registered into the ER yet, so they were like, we don't have her here either. So my mom couldn't find me, which was what the post was relevant to. It's funny, that, like, after the fact that, like, I was lost. I was there, but I was lost in the system. So we get down to the ER and get hooked up to more monitors and have more tests done. And they ended up having to do, I think, a chest x-ray, which the doctor said that he doesn't think it's going to show anything, but wanted to be safe. I don't know, but it exposes the baby to a small amount of radiation, so I had to, like, sign for that. And I was like, yeah, this really sucks, putting my baby at risk for nothing. And I could have said no to it, but, like, they said, well, he thinks it's necessary. And I'm like, but he just said that, I don't know. So they did it. Showed up fine. Then gave me some sort of medicine that, that helps with like acid reflux because I thought maybe that's what that was. And I was like, it's not acid reflux. I struggled with acid reflux bad before. Haven't had an issue with it with pregnancy. They're like, well, that's lucky because usually it's the opposite. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I'm blessed. But the medicine they gave me was disgusting. But like, whatever, it's supposed to coat your stomach. Still couldn't have water because then I got that medicine that had to coat my stomach. So then they basically tell me that if my heart rate was like any higher, they were gonna have to keep me overnight. But because it's not, they're gonna send me home and just have me watch it. And if it gets any worse, come back in. And I'm like, okay, well, you know. okay. So I had my follow up appointment. And I talked about more than just like stuff that I should talk about at the follow up appointment. Um, but I'll talk more about that in my next baby update because this one's going to be way too long if I try to combine the two. But she basically just <laughs> explained things better. They kept saying I was carrying really high. Well, I asked the doctor about it. She's like, you're not just carrying high. She's like, they're not technically wrong. You're carrying high and low, you're just small. And I asked like, if that was gonna cause any issues with like, I was super worried about like labor and delivery. And she's like, no, some of my shortest patients are the ones that have the biggest babies. And it's all about like your hip structure and everything. You being short is basically no reason that you wouldn't be able to have a baby naturally. She said, I can't promise that you won't have to have a C-section, but they never really can promise that, so it basically just reassured me and I had some concerns about medication, but again, I'll talk about that in, in my next baby update, which will include kind of my general birth plan, because I go to the doctors in two days for like the 36 week appointment. But the reason that I have so much chest pressure is because like you can't even get to my diaphragm with where the baby is and how, like she said, you can't even get to it. So she's probably just putting a lot of pressure on my lungs at the bottom. So the top part of my lungs has to work harder to kind of like make up for it. So it's probably what the chest pressure is. And you know, in general, there's just not a lot of room. <laughs> so having issues with breathing, it's pretty normal with pregnancy when you're further along. Well, and in general, I think. But I also have asthma, can't take my inhaler because it'll make my heart rate go up. Can't have that because I have issues with it. <laughs> So, it's when I get to be miserable. Um, it's not that dramatic, but it is, as you can probably tell in this video, a little difficult. It's not fun, but, you know, it's pregnancy. I haven't had any actual serious complications. I've had, as my doctor would say, a fairly uneventful pregnancy. There's been some scares, but nothing's actually been horribly wrong or any like serious complications anything that's concerning and I've had a very healthy pregnancy and I'm healthy so so both the baby and I are good healthy um I'm just uncomfortable but it's not that big of a deal I haven't had any like crazy changes with pregnancy other than that besides my belly getting bigger which causes pressure like everywhere else like you know uh, I get tuckered out easier my sleeping's been getting worse but it's not been crazy uncomfortable. It just kind of working with it. Pretty normal pregnancy things. Her movements are crazy. <laughs> like you can see them all the time. And a lot of the times they can be quite uncomfortable. But I don't know. It's also nice because like I know she's good because she's moving. So that's pretty much it for this update. There will be another one coming soon. That will be full of quite a bit too. This was kind of more of a hospital explanation within a baby update, but it's kind of also letting you know where I'm at. I'll do a little bump date real quick. So I hope you guys enjoyed my update and kind of 
explaining why I was in the labor and delivery then transferred to the ER. Yeah, stay tuned for another baby update and everything else. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!